Hi there guys, uh, this video is on um, five, but uh, it's about five superstars who WWE are currently pushing and that fans are rejecting them. This article was on Forbes.com. WWE hit a hard reset after WrestleMania 35 and a number of new stars have received a massive push because of it. Since WWE's flagship pay-per-view took place in early April, the company has undergone a number of wholesale changes in an effort to combat its rating slump as both Raw and SmackDown viewership have tanked over the past year. The first set of alterations WWE made came during the Superstar Shake-Up when AJ Styles, the face of SmackDown for nearly three years, moved to Raw and was replaced by Roman Reigns, who made the jump to the blue brand. Then WWE almost instantly rendered the shake-up irrelevant when Vince McMahon instituted the wildcard rule, which allows superstars to jump between brands and was a direct result of pressure from NBC Universal and Fox executives who desperately want WWE to end its rating woes. To go along with those substantial changes, WWE is also moving forward with significant pushes for a number of stars, some new and some old. For many of those stars, like Kofi Kingston and Finn Balor, the cloud, uh, crowd is clearly behind into those pushes. For some, however, it's becoming more and more apparent that WWE fans aren't too keen on accepting their pushes, at least not to the level they're being pushed. Here are five major ongoing pushes that WWE fans are clearly rejecting. Um, Baron Corbin. That's a good start. Fans are rejecting this. <laughs> Baron Corbin has been on Raw for, for a little more than a year, and WWE fans have been rejecting his push for, well, a little more than a year. Whether right or wrong, Corbin has shouldered some of the blame for Raw's plummeting viewership, as viewership data has indicated that fans aren't too thrilled with Corbin being pushed as a main eventer. Despite that, Corbin is currently feuding with Seth Rollins for the Universal title and is also advertised for another title match against Rollins at July's Extreme Rules, which suggests that Corbin's monstrous push will continue. I uh, hope that's not the case. I really don't want to see that, that again after stomping rounds. Not that I'm looking forward to that match anyway. Uh, I'll carry on. Even though WWE is committed to utilising Corbin as a top heel, fans are having none of it. Corbin is booed, sure, but being booed and be being over are two completely different things. WWE was somehow surprised that there was so much backlash to Corbin retiring Kurt Angle. In his retirement match at WrestleMania 35, and many fans, even those who despise part timers, were clamouring for John Cena to replace Corbin in the match. Yeah, I was one of those people. In fact, even Angle himself wasn't thrilled with facing Corbin, which should tell you all you need to know about how WWE's fan base is. For the most part, having none of Corbin being pushed in such a high profile role. Not that Corbin is a bad talent, he's just not a main eventer, and there's nothing to suggest, to suggest that fans will ever accept him as one, even though Vince McMahon is a huge fan of the former NFL star. Well, a huge fan of Corbin, then, I know, well, I know he, he had heat at the time, but remember, like, the um, failed cash in money in the bank, they put, and then him being fed to John Cena at SummerSlam straight afterwards. I mean, they, they did completely bury Corbin, and I think at that point, fans just stopped caring. And they've been, like, trying to build him back up, but fans are just rejecting it. Anyway, next on the list, Shane McMahon. That's another name that I agree with is getting, like, a push he shouldn't be getting. 
If there is a SmackDown equivalent to Corbin, it's Shane McMahon, who was once thought to be a major draw for WWE. But one could argue that the push of Shane O'Mahon is even more frustrating than Corbin's for a wide variety of reasons. One, he's the son of the boss. Two, he's not a trained wrestler, at least in the traditional scene sense. Three, he's been a huge focal point of both Raw and SmackDown. Four, the novelty of his unexpected return to WWE in 2016 has long since worn off. Combine all those factors and you get a character in Shane who is despised by the crowd, but much like Corbin is getting the type of heat that results when fans really just want you to go away. It's just difficult for fans to accept a 49-year-old non-wrestler who's been overexposed with far too much TV time as one of the most pushed stars on TV. While Shane has gotten some solid heat during his feuds with The Miz and Roman Reigns, that heat is less in indicative of him being a great heel and more so a sign of fans growing tired of seeing him as one of the centrepieces of both of WWE's main roster brands, especially after he got a major mania match for the fourth straight year, one that resulted in other high-profile stars being left on the show. The fact Shane will never be truly accepted as a top star because of his age, his last name and his overbearing presence on TV and fans are freaking out about the possibility that he could become WWE Champion in the near future. Yeah, I heard that, I did hear that too, that Shane McMahon could very well be the one to take the title off Kofi Kingston. God, I hope not. Uh, next on the list here is Lacey Evans. Lacey Evans has plenty of talent and could be a big star in the future, but her push is a classic case of too much too soon. I would agree that it's too much too soon, yeah. The former Marine has been transformed from a rel relative unknown in NXT to someone who WWE has very high hopes for which became blatantly obvious when she instantly became the focal point of Raw's women's division following WrestleMania 35 in route to a Raw women's title feud with Becky Lynch. As is the case with Corbin, it's not that Evans is a bad performer, but, but because she leapfrogged so many other deserving stars like the absentee Sasha Banks and got the proverbial rocket strapped to her. She's viewed as someone who is being forced upon WWE fans before she's ready. <coughs> um, about that, uh, the in-ring performer, yeah, like she was showing a little bit of improvement in NXT, but I, I think she was called up from NXT at least a year and a half, maybe two years too early. I think she needed to stay down there and continue to develop her in-ring skills before uh, joining the main roster. Virtually every star who's received a massive push in recent years was eventually rejected, especially if they weren't viewed as a top talent or if they were pushed incredibly strongly right out of the gate. That same fate even befell Ronda Rousey, who turned heel as a result of WWE fans rejecting her monstrous push as a babyface. Um, I wouldn't necessarily I fully agree with that. I don't think she was necessarily given a monster push. Yeah, she was at the top of the uh, women's division because she was Ronda Rousey. And with her holding the the title it did like hold up the women's division a little bit because all the other women had nothing to fight for but it's like from Survivor Series you know when she got booed in the match with Charlotte so from then onwards yeah fans started rejecting her um, the fact that she was feuding with Becky Lynch going into WrestleMania, I do think was a big part of the reason why she was getting booed. But there's, 
a few weeks as a heel, I thought were the, were the, were the best in her run, personally. Now Evans is get now Evans is getting the same type of treatment we saw for stars like Rousey, Brock Lesnar, Alberto Del Rio, and Sheamus during their rookie years, when they were pushed so strongly that fans quickly grew to resent them. The good news is that all of those stars became household names in pro wrestling. The bad news is that it has often made their few and storylines tough to watch due to the negative or indifferent crowd reaction, which could happen to Evans as well, as she's failed to live up to the lofty expectations of her. As a result of her lacklustre feud with Lynch and a terrible raw match with Charlotte Flair. Yeah, if you can't have a good match with Charlotte, then yeah, you're definitely not ready. And like Lacey Evans is not ready yet. And fans are noticing that Lynch's momentum has cooled off considerably since a feud with Evans part began partly because Evans has failed to win over the audience. Yeah, there's some truth in that. Also, she went on from um, winning the title from Ronda Rousey to feuding with Lacey Evans. The two... Right. The two are uncomparable. Brock Lesnar. There was excitement about the possibility of Brock Lesnar leaving WWE when he lost the Universal title at WrestleMania 35. A move that would have freed up some space in the main event picture on Raw. Then Lesnar retired from UFC after getting a, a better deal from WWE. And he's since reclaimed his spot as one of the most featured and most pushed acts on Raw. Whenever he's around, that is. Although the strong fan reaction to Lesnar is still there, so too is the resistance to his push. Critics have said that Lesnar's surprising money in a Mac victory is everything that is wrong, wrong with WWE. And that was a huge, huge mistake. That will only further <coughs> um, exasperate the issues plaguing WWE, like its over-reliance on part-time stars and its struggles to consistently create compelling programming. Yeah, I personally felt uh, Andrade Cianomus should have won Money in the Bank. While Lesnar undoubtedly has a ton of star power, his push as Mr. Money in the Bank and the clear top act isn't fresh or exciting, not in the slightest. All Lesnar's renewed push has done is remind fans that WWE will push him at all costs, no matter how detrimental his push is to the rest of the company stars. There is a reason why WWE has been lambasted as clueless for putting the Money in the Bank briefcase on Lesnar. A decision that has only alienated his, its rapidly disappearing fanbase even further, as Raw generated an all-time viewership low just this past week, a few days after Lesnar's possible cash-in was supposedly a big selling point of Super Showdown. Simply put, many fans no longer want to see Lesnar or any other part-timer, for that matter, in a headlining role. And until WWE decides to stop doing that, those stars will continue to be despised, but not in a way that makes them draw money. As evidenced by WWE's plummeting ratings, live event attendance, and WWE Network subscriber counts. Yeah, you know, while they're while they're pushing like the uh, part time as more in like the main event role, it's not helping in like um, the current roster. You know, like become major stars because the part timers are getting all the, like the TV time. Um, next on the list, Lars Sullivan. This will be interesting. Um, the rejection of Lars Sullivan has as much to do with what he does in the ring as it does with what he's done outside of it. It's now well known that Sullivan was fined $100,000 by WWE for making vile, racist and bigoted social media posts prior to signing with the company. 
and despite issuing what some have deemed a half-hearted apology for those controversial posts, fans and even some within WWE alike aren't too eager to forgive him. Well, uh, he has apologised for the comments, and like they were made like several years, well, quite a few years ago, and they like they find him, they should just uh, move on now. That's just one thing Sullivan has working against him. In addition, he's receiving an absolutely huge push when what little fans saw of him in NXT indicates that he's not a main event caliber in-ring worker, talker or overall performer. Um, I, don't, I don't necessarily agree with that. I do, I do think he still is a little, a little bit green in the ring. He definitely, I think, should have stayed down in NXT probably for another year or so before going up. Um, I, th- I think he's alright in the ring. His um, like takeover match with Alistair Black was was pretty good. Um, his mic his mic skill his mic skills are decent. He's a pretty good talker, so I don't particularly agree with uh, what was said there. Uh, anyway, I'll, I'll carry on to WWE is trying to get him over as a monster, a la Braun Strowman, when he's quite frankly not nearly as big or as intimidating as WWE is making him out to be. Those two factors alone are really working against him at a time when fans almost always reject an instantly huge push for an unproven talent. When they pay attention to what type of people those stars are outside of the ring and when they value talented in-ring performers more than mundane giants who would have thrived more in the 1980s. Sullivan may very well... Sullivan may very well prove his doubt is wrong, but as someone who hasn't endeared himself to fans outside of the ring and leaves a lot to be desired inside it, fan resentment to his push is already growing at a rapid pace as the crowd remains virtually silent during his matches, which is a telltale sign that they simply don't care about him. Yeah, that bit's true. Like, I... I said earlier, I don't agree with what was said about his in-ring work. I think I think he's 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 a pretty good in-ring performer. Even though he is still he's still a little bit green. As I said, he should have stayed in NXT a bit longer to continue to develop. But as far as like the crowd reaction, yeah, like he um he does come out quick it sometimes. Um, WWE need to uh, like come up with better storylines for him and actually give the people, give the fans a reason to start caring about Lars Sullivan. I personally like Lars Sullivan. I think he's got, he's got, you know, he's, he's got a great look about him. I, I do think he could have a big future on the main roster. Uh, what I think they should have done with um, Lars Sullivan, instead of like, having him come out and attack Kurt Angle, you know, like he did on the Raw after WrestleMania, maybe he should have been the one who interfered in the Seth Rollins and Kofi Kingston match. The fact that Seth and Kofi are you know, both uh, very popular with the fans, I, I, think, I think that crowd certainly would have reacted if uh, Lars Sullivan interfered in that match. Uh, um, anyway guys, if you enjoyed this video, then hit the like, subscribe, and don't forget to share, and I'll see you next time.